Hello, and welcome to this video about Cubase 11's Frequency EQ plugin. Frequency was introduced with Cubase 9 in 2016, and while it's a great plugin, and many people would like it to be the replacement for their standard channel EQ, it's been missing a really important feature for some time that lots of other EQ plugins do have. That's Dynamic EQ. With the Cubase 11 release of Frequency, known as Frequency 2, it now adds the ability to have dynamic EQ and also adds multi-channel side chaining for external control of this. Let's take a look. So here we are in Cubase and as you can see, I've got a few things set up. So first things first, we're just going to look at the dynamic EQ. So frequency hasn't really changed significantly other than we now have this new single or multi view mode so previously we had multi view where you'd see everything but because now we have extra controls and you can't fit everything in so if we look at the dynamic controls we can see we can't see the eq controls so we now have single mode where you've got these tabs here and we're just going to look at band 5 in this case because it's near to where what i would want to do so Again, just got the same loop as I've used on a number of videos here. And we're just going to look at the dynamic EQ in action. So first things first, let's just cut some of that out. So what I want to do is cut out some of this sort of around 2K, maybe just a little bit higher. Just want to remove some of that, but I don't want it to remove it all the time. All I really want it to do is to remove it when the snare is happening. The rest of the time, I'd rather it's flat. So I want it to be okay most of the time, but then just pop that in. So what we're going to do is turn on dynamics. So here the dynamics are turned on and then adjust this. And as you can see, the effective EQ is this line, which is bouncing up and down here. And depending on the threshold and the ratio and the start, I can control the way that this works dynamically. So here I'm getting much more of an effect than I want. So you can see it's only really kicking in when there's lots of energy in that band and the rest of the time it's leaving it alone. So it's acting more like a compressor than an EQ, but it's a, a multi-band effectively. So it's just bringing down the level in that section. Now, we can control how much by threshold and ratio interact. So if I turn the ratio up, you can see it's becoming much more sensitive to that and getting down to that EQ level more quickly. But you can just juggle around with these. So you could maybe get that so it just bites just on the snare and then it really bites by turning that up. So a bit of playing around. And that's much preferable to just this here where it's cutting out too much. It also means we can maybe go a little bit further, so we can probably bring that gain down a little bit more. And then it's only doing it there. So you can tweak this to your heart's content. We've also got this start point here, so maybe we want a bit of boost initially and then it going into cut, and we can do that by changing the start. So you've got lots of options here for what you can do with the dynamic EQ. Next up, side chaining. So as you may have seen in another video, side chaining has been expanded, so now we have multiple side chain inputs. So this can be extremely useful with frequencies, multiple EQ bands. So in this case, we're going to use band two because I'm interested in the kick drum and again, band five, let's say. So I'm going to turn off all the others just so it's a little less confusing visually and I'm going to go into single mode. Now, what my setup is here is I've got that drum loop playing and I've got another kick drum. And what I want is when this kick drum is present is this drum loop to lose the bass. So we're just going to EQ that out. So if I solo this for the time being, get frequency up, we're going to find the frequency and you can see pretty clearly it's a little lower than band two starts out at so it's one it about here and i just want to bring so it goes into the kind of that leading in sound rather than when it's off and you've got a much clearer bass drum so it's not a massive difference but it helps that when the other bass drum is present we're not going to have the attacks of two different things and they're not going to be arguing over this part of the frequency spectrum 
but I want to automate that. And yes, I could turn it on and off by automating this band, but I'd rather do it with dynamic EQ. So what I'm going to do is turn that on and the side chain is going to be on. And normally that would be on internal, but we're going to change that. So instead it's going to come from, in this case, side chain two, because I like to keep them the same numbers because then my brain doesn't explode too often. And we're going to have that being fed by the kick drum. So as ever, we click the cog, we pick the right side chain. So we're going to pick side chain two, add a side chain source. In this case, it will be the kick. I normally leave it on level zero and then just put it on pre-fader. So any other mix changes I do won't change the amount of effect that's happening here. Because if you put it on post-fader, then if we turn the kick down in the mix, then it will change the effect of this, which generally I don't want. So now, once that kick starts playing... That's now running. Now the last thing we need to do is we need to turn side chaining on. So now it's being triggered by that kick drum. And we can verify that because if we change the cycle so we go between the kick being present and not, you'll see that when the kick isn't there, the EQ isn't working. It's only cutting in when the side chain from the kick tells it to. So this again semi automates the mix process and we can do exactly the same kind of thing with the snare so I'm just going to run through that quickly so again band 5 so I'm going to find where I think that's going to conflict and again it's going to be somewhere around here so I want to take some of that out but I only want that out when the snare is present so let's bring that snare in and now we're going to set exactly the same thing up so on this band, I'm going to turn on dynamics and then set the side chain again, side chain five. And now here, change to side chain five. And you can see we have the diamond that shows that side chain two has got some input on it. I'm going to add side chain source, in this case, the snare. Again, make it pre fader. Side chain is already turned on, and we'll find that when the snare plays, and again, we go to another one where we go between snare and no snare we'll see that when the snare stops that eq isn't happening it's only happening where that's there and again with a bit of adjustment we can make it more severe maybe again it's the kind of thing you can play around with but it just automates your eq so it means that if you change the arrangement of your song you're not having to go to this track and think about, oh, I've got to turn band five on at this point and off at those others. And also turning it on and off at different places is much more difficult. You've, you've got a lot of work to do. It's much easier to use this kind of thing to do it. So multiple side chain is really useful because it means we can control each band of frequency with whatever side chain input we want and make your mixes much smoother and much easier to work with. So there you have it. Frequency 2 adds some useful extra features, and while it's not a night and day change, there's a lot of creative control that you'll now have which wasn't present before. I hope you found this video useful, and if you have, please consider liking and subscribing for more Music Tech Tuition.